Okay. Hello, Bashar. And a you good day. Everyone, pay attention, for there will always be something in every conversation that will help you in some way, shape, or form, or help someone you know. Again, pay attention to the synchronicities and the karmic alignments that you have created together this night of your time. Greetings, Bashar. To you, good day. I have um, felt the misalignment um, in my physical body for the last two months. How exciting! Yes, I have felt chronic pain. Oh, all right. And I have been taking um, painkillers every day, and my body got addicted to them. Oh, all right. And so uh, what hole are you attempting to fill in your life? Can you answer that? Is there an emptiness you are attempting to fill? Something that you would like to be doing you are not? Some path you would like to be taking? Some dream you would like to fulfill that you are resisting? And thus then creating an emptiness that must be filled? Yes. What? Uh, um, in my mind, I'm struggling with the idea of letting go of the idea that I have to work. And my dream would be to paint and to write. Is that not work? I'm not making money. Is painting and writing not a type of work? I consider work when I gain money. So, so you are saying that painting is not work and writing is not work. So therefore, if you're not defining it as work, you're saying it can't bring you money. Yes? Correct. Well, why are you defining it that way? It still requires some particular action, some physical action on your part, doesn't it? Yes. Isn't that the simplest definition of work? Yes. We understand that, as you say on your planet, a labor of love is no labor at all. It doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like an effort. But it still requires the idea of the use of energy. And by your scientific definition, that is still a definition of work being done. So why are you saying that painting and writing are not the type of work that can attract abundance to you? Why are you making that definition connection? Hmm. hmm. Yeah. Would you all like some karma chips while she's thinking? <laughs> <laughs> karma chips and dip. Mm. So, by so, changing my definition... Can you use your imagination to understand that there are people on your planet who do write and paint and make what you call a handsome living? Yes. You know that they exist, yes? yes. That's not a secret to you, is it? No. Oh, all right. So, why them and not you? What's so different about you that you can't do what they do? I feel guilt. Guilt about what? About doing what I love doing. <laughs> Why? Because I've been um, trained as a child that I must work to make money. and. But that is work. You're not paying attention? Painting and writing is work. Are you saying that all the painters in the world and all the writers in the world aren't working? I think they would beg to differ. Mm. Yes? Yes. Well, so why them? Why not you? May I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Do you wish to be arrogant? No. Well, then why are you being arrogant? Out of all the people in the world, only I will this not work for. I am so special that while all these people can make a living writing and painting, I can't. I must stand out as something different. That makes me special. Makes you arrogant. Mm -hmm. You see the contradiction here? Yes. If it works for them, it can work for you if you wish it to, if you allow it to. You just need to drop all the definitions you're holding on to that don't allow you to experience how it can. Because obviously, if you see examples in your reality of other people doing what it is you say you prefer to do, and it's working fine for them, that must at least give you a hint that it can work for you, yes? Yes. 
and that the only reason it wouldn't be is because you are standing in the way with your own definition and you're holding your joy at bay. Remember, as we were talking about, you're always giving off a core vibration. That core vibration is the essence of joy and love and creativity. And the idea is that you are always, always, without fail, you are always attracting the things that are representative of supporting you in that joy and in that creativity. You're always attracting them. You don't have to learn how to attract or manifest those things. But you have to understand that if you're not experiencing those things, if they don't seem to be coming to you, it's not because you're not attracting them. It's because you're holding them away with your definitions. So if you just drop those definitions, that will all come flooding in. Because you don't have to do anything special to make it come to you. You just have to allow it to come to you by getting out of your own way with definitions that don't work for you. Make sense? Yes. Is this helping you feel a little bit lighter? Um, yes. So, Bashar, yes. If, 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 if I do what I love doing without guilt... Yes. Would, well, would uh, let me stop you right there. Please listen and pay attention to the contradictory definitions you're setting up right there because how can you actually do something you love to do if you actually feel guilty? If you're feeling guilt, you're not doing something you love to do. If you're doing something you love to do, you feel no guilt. So by definition, if you're truly doing what you love to do, guilt isn't a component of that definition. And if you're truly experiencing guilt, you are not, by definition, doing what you love to do. Because guilt is not a definition in your overall definition of joy and love and excitement. You understand? Yes, the guilt would come from not working in something. That no, happened. guilt does not come from not working. Guilt comes from your definition of your relationship to the situation. No situation has built-in meaning and no circumstance has built-in struggle or built-in guilt. Only your definition of your relation to the situation creates that experience. You understand? Yes. So, why are you choosing to believe or buy into the idea that to do what you love brings guilt up? Like you're doing something wrong. When doing what you love is exactly right for you by definition because it's what you love and therefore it is your true core vibration and therefore as your true core vibration that's exactly what you ought to do so why would you be guilty doing exactly what you ought to do because of the pressure of all the people around me that want but you don't understand what we are saying the pressure isn't coming from them it's coming from you agreeing with them and pressuring yourself to not be who you are. Mm -hmm. The pressure you feel doesn't come from them. They may offer you an opportunity to feel pressure with their belief systems by saying, you should feel guilty. <laughs> but the only way you will actually feel guilty is if you agree with them that you should. Mm -hmm. And when you agree with them that you should, then you'll feel the pressure of the guilt. You'll feel the pressure. But if you say, are you nuts? You don't know who I am. You're not talking about me. Oh, I see. I can have the compassion now and the eyes can be opened wide enough to understand that when you're talking about feeling guilt, that I should feel this and I should feel that and I should feel this pressure, what you're actually doing is wagging your finger at yourself saying you are the one that feels this and you resent the idea that I don't prefer to because if I don't prefer to feel guilt, I am always then a reminder of the fact that you are choosing to feel it. And you don't know how to change that, and therefore you resent that I do. But if you don't resent that I do and allow yourself to let it be all right for me to be who I wish to be, then I will be an example for you, and you can choose to not feel guilty too by seeing my example, and then I'm helping you. Mm -hmm. But if you agree to feel the guilt and the pressure that they say you should, you're not only not helping yourself, you're not helping them because all you're doing is reinforcing the thing that they're already doing to themselves, which is putting pressure and guilt upon themselves and therefore trying to share that with everyone because, as you say, misery loves company. <laughs>
So why reinforce the negative in them? By agreeing with them and agreeing to experience energy you know you don't prefer. Why reinforce their pain? Why reinforce their struggle by continuing to agree to be an example and a reflection of the struggle they already know instead of being a shining example of a different option for them? And give them an opportunity to see in you, well, you know, she's doing pretty good after all. I didn't believe that was possible, but look at her. She's happy as a lark. Painting and writing and, well, and look at that. The money's coming in. The abundance is coming in. She's just sailing through life. Now, I wonder, maybe I could do that. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm too afraid. Well, I don't know. Maybe I could talk with her. Maybe she could share with me some ideas of how she was able to let go of that. You never know. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. That's how you help others, by being the example of a different option instead of simply reinforcing the negative idea that they are offering to you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Is this helping you? Yes, thank you, because I had never imagined that my physical pain had to do with not allowing myself to do yes. what I am most exciting. Well, now you can imagine it, because really, all pain is the result of resistance to the natural self. Mm. You understand? Yes. All right. Does this help you? Yes. Then happy painting, happy writing, happy abundance to you. Thank you so much, Pasha. Thank you. <laughs> Paint a new picture. Write a new story by changing your definitions. And you will live that story. You will live in that picture. The picture will become real. The story will become yours.